No. I know that's not grammatically correct, Sister Isa. Uh, Lord, have mercy. The kitchen did it again. They did it. They did it again. Lord Jesus. I don't know if they had anything left or not. Brother Armstrong, come on up. You know, you done sat through worship this morning, then you done ate enough chicken to give us one song. <laughs> and I done ate enough chicken to give two or three songs. <laughs> We're just thankful to those that have decided to stay with us a little while longer and to... Um, Enjoy good fellowship. I would ask, though, that you all pray for Sister Linda McAdory. They just took her to the hospital. Blood pressure was real high. And so let's be praying that that, that that pressure will stay down. We can get her to the hospital and see if they can get it down so that she doesn't go into any stroke-type situation. That was pretty high. Thank you, Sister Thompson, for doing that for me. And we appreciate uh, that. And thank you for making sure we know where it is, that we will know where it is from now on. For those, for those purposes. But let me let me thank um, in advance the kitchen for an outstanding job as they as they always do. The food was very, very tasty, very good. Thank God for them. We're gonna ask Brother Armstrong who would come up and give us a couple of songs and then we'll come back uh, for uh, prayer and then we're gonna introduce our speaker again and we're gonna loose him and let him let him go. Thank you, Brother Wallace. Uh, I was uh, in service this morning and I was listening at the folks talking about the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. And the lady sitting behind me said, Yeah, I got five grandchildren and no great great grandchildren. I wanted to turn around and tell her, Well, I have 24 grandchildren and five great grandchildren. You know? <laughs> I said that I wouldn't, but uh, I'm an old man, but I feel pretty good. Thank God for that. You know, he's been keeping me. We're going to go back old school, Brother Foster. You don't mind that, do you? This is old school. Red book. Red book. Here we go. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking and it is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, the Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed And that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy. Dine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and they may make the fall, blessed Jesus, oh my.
songs when I can and one of the one I do love to hear him sing is this one no not Harvard I leave that to him I'm not there yet <laughs> I'm not at that one yet well I'm singing oh when I come oh when I come to the end of my journey weary of life weary of life and the battle is won I'm carrying the stick carrying the stick and so sorry dims and he'll understand and he'll say
ring the stem and the crow so redemption and he'll understand Thank you for all of the blessings of life and in particular the blessings of this day. We thank you, dear Lord, for the noble purpose for which we have gathered this afternoon to hear another word from the word. We're thankful for this great church here in Hernando, the West Oak Grove congregation. We thank you for the Grove's influence in this community. We thank you for its ministering evangelist, Brother Terry Wallace. We thank you, dear Lord, for his ability, for his dignity, for his service. We thank you for his wife and his family. We thank you for the men that work with him cooperatively and cohesively. Bless them going forward, Lord, that they can continue to do great work in your vineyard right here in the city of Hernando. We're so thankful, Lord, that you've given Brother Ben Foster and his wife safe passage to this place and the word is everywhere that he's already uh, started a great meeting and has done a tremendous job preaching the gospel even on this morning be with him now as he prepares to bring us a word from the word help him father to deliver the things that he has studied help him to deliver them such that those who are outside of the body of Christ will be moved to say, what must I do to be saved? Be with those of us who are members of the church that we can be edified and built up in the most holy faith. We love you, Lord. In the Latin root of the word, adorare, we adore you. The ongoing truth remains, we can't make it without you. We want to pray now, as we do always, that you would help us in the things that are right, Defeat us in the things that are not right, and always give us the strength as your children to endure your chastening. Be with the fruitfulness of this meeting this week, and at the appropriate time, we're asking that you give the man of God and his wife safe passage home. In the strong name of Christ, we pray. Let every heart that agrees say amen. amen. God bless my father's children. I tell you, I am, I'm still full. Them green and green beans is laying yonder on my liver. Secreting enzymes that's weakening my eyes. And I looked to my left as I was sitting over here, and I said, I need Ricky. Come on up here. What? Oh, he's already come up. And I don't want you to be in, well, I ain't going to say in a hurry, because he's saying in a hurry. But, um. He wasn't singing. I ain't gonna say, well, he's just a singing brother. And he has his own unique, unique style. We want to be encouraged through a song, and I'll come back after him, and then we'll introduce our speaker. A amen at that time. Brother Ricky, come on and bless us with whatever. No, just whatever right, the Lord lay on your heart. Just, right, just go ahead on and help yourself. I know Jesus, he will fix it for you. Lord, he knows, he knows just what to do. Let me tell you, whenever, whenever, come on. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Ricky, you moved a little bit of them greens off my liver. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus will fix it. Won't he fix it? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boy, yes, sir. That didn't light your fire. And all your wood wet. Amen. Amen. There's nothing in the words of Brother Holly stirred the heart and moved the soul like good saying. And we thank God for that. We've been blessed today. Brother Justin started us off at the 930 hour and blessed our hearts with a, a word from the Lord, from the children of Israel and God working through them. And we thank God for him. And we thank God that, uh, uh, that the Camp Creek, amen, released him for today. And uh, uh, him and his sporty jacket today, amen. <laughs> amen. I was messing with him this morning when he came in. I said, boy, I said, we want to see Jesus when you get up to preach. He said, well, if they don't see him, at least they ought to hear him. Amen. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully they heard him this morning. And Justin, I want you to get ready. Amen. Give us a song. We got work before you leave here. Ate up enough chicken. Enough chicken to sing us another song. Amen. Well, Foster, <laughs> it's, no, it's becoming no stranger to the grove. I already done fell in love with him because he preached Bible. Amen. Just preach good Bible. And I pray that you all are listening carefully to what is being said because there's so much being said that many times people are not listening. And so we're grateful that God has still allowed him to be upon the, the earth to be able to be heard. For the million of people who uh, went through this COVID passed on, but God left them here. And that's not accidental. I believe it is providential. That Brother Ben Foster is still with us, outstanding preacher. His roots go back to Amorton, Arkansas. Right, Amen. With a lot of, of education, Southwestern Christian College, uh, uh, Southwestern Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas, as well as East Texas University and Commerce, Texas. He's got a lot of education. Honorary Doctor of Divinity from the National Academy of Christian Studies in Fort Worth, Texas, author of books, amen. He's been the minister there uh, at the Cherry Valley, Cedar Valley. He was there for over 22 years, but now he currently served at the Eastside Church there in Garland, Texas for the past 13 years. His wife, Vivian, is, is with him, amen. He said he doesn't really go anywhere. Amen, much in terms of meeting with our sister Vivian. And we certainly are honored to have her in our midst on today. And then, you know, you know, it's always good, amen, when, when wife and husband can travel together. Amen, I always enjoy Sister Wallace. Uh, we fuss all the way down the road, and we fuss all the way back down the road. But you know what? The trip was so short when she's with me, amen. And, uh, uh, and the older uh, that, that, that she gets, the more she fuss. Amen. And the more I listen, amen. Uh, uh, and I find out that the trip, amen, is much shorter when I'm just listening. Uh, and then sometimes I get a chance to fuss too, I must admit. But, but we're certainly we're, we're just grateful that Sister Vivian is, is with us. And, and Brother uh, Foster, we, we're grateful for this church because we don't have issues with ministers and ministers' wives coming and we don't be really concerned about the cost because I read somewhere that the liberal soul shall be made fat. Yes, and when you are giving person in a giving church, God always open up doors and amen. You know, some folk will squeeze a nickel to the buffalo grunt, you know. Some folk just so tight when they walk, they just be squeaking, making all kind of noise. You know, but when you are a free flower, when blessings can flow through you, then God's going to always send blessings to you. And Westro Grove, over the years, God has always brought us through because of the liberality of so many of our members. And so we're grateful. Three wonderful children, Angela, Dan, uh, Angela Danielle, and Vivian Ann, and their late son, Ben Foster, Jr., but he says he's so grateful for him. Uh, being blessed with five grandchildren and one great grandbaby girl who are all, he said, all of them are the love of, of their lives. And so I know all about them grandbabies. I haven't experienced the great grands yet. 
but I've experienced grandpawing. Amen. What a wonderful experience. Amen. I can keep them for a little while and then give them back. Amen. And I tell you, it has been exhilarating these last two weeks. Audra and Trey has moved into their own house. And I was just walking through my house saying, happy days are here again. Y'all are catch that this evening eating your ice cream. But if you ever had them all in the house, amen, and you get them all back out, you know what I'm talking about, amen. But it's always a joy seeing them come, and it's a good joy seeing them go too. But certainly we are grateful. You know, and I say that because uh, we have raised them, amen, to where they want to go on their own and do their own thing. And you know what? I don't care they don't tell me nothing. So they don't tell me nothing. Not knowing is the best thing in the world. Amen. Come on, stand up with me. Come on, Justin. Give us one of them shouting songs, and Brother Foster will come in his own way. There's a happy land of promise over in the beyond where the saved of worship soon the glory share. Where and live on forevermore and everybody yeah come on church and everybody yeah we will be yeah we will be oh, oh, oh. and we will shout and sing his praises to the never ending day appreciate you all inviting my wife and me to be a part of this. And we had a great time and want to commend the sisters. One thing about the, the sisters here, Brother Wallace, they, they would ask you what you prefer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just appreciated that fine service that they gave to us. And um, we are delighted to have preacher Brother Holland, where is it? Right there, Norris Road. He came down to uh, Southwestern Christian College. And uh, just about every preacher 
left, uh, were left there with his message on our heart because he was able to drive his points. And one thing about it, as well as me, uh, he emphasized that we don't shouldn't go by our feelings, no, sir. but go by what's revealed. Yes, sir. I won't ever forget it. Thank you. Great message. And uh, I tell you, I just can't get in the message without saying something about this great and fantastic preacher you all have here, Brother Wallace. And, uh, I, I preached around the brotherhood, and I've learned so much from him just watching and studying him and seeing how he uh, does ministry and he does it well and how he relates to people. And just about everybody that he meets want to meet him again. Amen. Amen. And I just thank God for him. And uh, he and I are becoming good friends. And certainly he'll be coming over to share his gifts with the church where I preach uh, real soon. I want to uh, call attention briefly this evening. It's been a long day and I do realize it. And I don't want to hold you long, but I want to hold you strong. Amen. Is that all right? I hold you strong. And we want to look at Romans chapter 11, verse 33. One of my favorite uh, messages to preach. May not be able to preach it all this evening, but I'll give you some snippets from it. And we're looking at verse 33 of chapter 11 to the end. This is called a doxology. It's a hymn of praise. Paul is praising God uh, for uh, the Jews and the Gentiles being able to come together. He told uh, the Jews who were somewhat uh, kind of headstrong about their position of being God's chosen people under the Old Testament, but now the chosen people are the members of the churches of Christ. And uh, he said in 1122, he says, now, I want you to know uh, that uh, the, behold the goodness and severity of God. Uh, and, and so he's talking about it. And he says, uh, upon those that fell was severe. That would be the Jews. But he says, now, to the Gentiles, if you fall, if you continue in his goodness, then you'll be protected. But if you don't, then the same thing will happen to you because God is no respecter of person. And so he's talking about all of that. And then he got to the end of it before he's going into the practical sections of the book, starting with chapter 12. He said, all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways pass uh, finding out. Now he's talking about uh, the fact of his providential ways. We cannot fathom everything that God is about, uh, but we are glad to have what we have uh, in the plain, simple plan of salvation. He says, for who had known the mind of God? Uh, who had been his counselor? In other words, you can't search it out because with our little finite mind, we cannot examine thoroughly the infinite by. And then he says, uh, uh, who hath been his counselor? Or uh, who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? He's not going to have to be taken a loan out from us. Because God is the owner of everything. He said, for of him. In other words, he's the source. And through him, he's the channel. And to him, he's the object of uh, all things in whom be glory uh, forever, amen. And so we are looking here uh, this evening uh, at the fact that God is in control. And we will be showing that in his providential will, uh, there are some things we just have to accept because our thoughts are not God's thoughts. And we recognize when my wife and I lost our son to a terrible car accident in 2000, uh, I asked why, just like anybody else, he was a preacher on the way with tremendous ability. And uh, I grieved over it. And, uh, and you know, 
And I asked God why, because there were young men his age. He was in Southwestern in his last semester, about to graduate, and uh, uh, on dope and all of this. Some of them would go in the hospital and come out alive. But uh, God chose to take our son. And it grieved me so until uh, a good colleague and friend came knocking on the door during that time. But I was still in grief and uh, said, is anything I can do? And uh, I had to apologize to her several times because I said, no, not, no, not at this time. And uh, if I had, had it to do over again, I would have done it differently. But, uh, you know, when you're going through it, uh, you know, it's just some things you can't explain. You just have to go through it. But one thing about it, if God can bring us to it, he can bring us through it. Say amen if you can. And uh, uh, during that period, there was a brother by the name of Dr. Uh, Mason, uh, James Mason Sr., and uh, from Oklahoma. You probably knew him. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, Brother Wallace knows so many, many pre preachers. But he sent my wife and me a book during that time by James Dobson, Dr. James Dobson, that was entitled, When God Doesn't Make Sense. And when I perused the content of that book, I thought it was a misnomer to say when God doesn't make sense. But the more I read it, the more I got the import of it. And I thought I'd use it for a subject this evening uh, from this message, When God Doesn't Make Sense. And uh, we're going to look at uh, some significant keystones, three, that we propose to have time to do this evening. And, uh, but I want us to know in the outset is that uh, uh, whether a, a matter in the Bible makes sense to us or not, we still have to be home with the, the fact that God has more sense than all of us put together. Right. Say amen. amen. When God doesn't make sense. Now, in the first place, God's providential methods in the life of the child of God are often misunderstood. Yes. And uh, whether we understand them or not, what he's doing in providence, uh, it makes sense to God. Uh -huh. And we recognize this by looking at the Old Testament in Isaiah 44, 26 through 28. I want you to walk with me now through this sermon. Isaiah 44. 26 through 28, and we'll look at that and see what we have there. Brother Wallace, help me out there a little bit and see what the Bible has to say. Isaiah, all right, and the Bible says what in that regard? Isaiah 44. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44, verse 26 through 28. And it reads that confirming the word of his servant. Uh huh. And perform the counsel of his messenger. Yes. That saith that saith to Jerusalem. Yes. Thou shalt be inhibited, inhabited. Uh -huh. The city of Judah. Yes. Ye shall be built. Uh -huh. And I will rise up and decay. Place thereon. All right. So God is getting back to bring the Jews out of captivity. They had been in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. Now Persia is getting ready to take over. It's taking over. And God is saying that he still has the power. And he says that says to the deep, which would be the rivers, he brought them through the Red Sea, the sea. He said, be dry. I can say that. And we'll dry up the rivers. Whatever God says uh -huh. is going to be factual. Yeah, yes, sir. And then he says that says to Cyrus. Now we got to recognize that Cyrus was reigning from 538 to 529 B.C. And God... 150 years before he was born, put his name, thank yeah. you preacher, yeah. put his name in the Bible, yeah. uh -huh. told what he would do, yes, sir. anointed him before he was born yeah, right. uh, as one of his shepherds. He was yeah. not yeah. in Israel, but God used somebody outside of his covenant right. uh -huh. to do a will for God. Uh -huh. In other words, God can do what he wants to do, yes, sir. and whether we understand it or not. And so uh, God stood way over in time and looked way over in future and told with precision what would happen before it happened. What a God we serve. 
And the Bible says in Isaiah 55, uh, verses 8 and following, God said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and watereth the earth, and the Bible says, and returneth not thither, before it make it bud, and bring forth uh, its plants. Say amen. God has the snow and the rain to come down, but he's not going to evaporate it back up until it uh, effectuates its purpose. God is able. He's doing it. He said, just like I have a purpose for the rain and the snow to come down, and in order to moisture the ground, and you can bring forth your vegetation, he said, the same thing exists uh, with my word. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall uh, accomplish uh, to the thing that I sent it, and it'll prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God said it's not coming back in vain. And so when you're dealing with God, you have to understand that there are some things that are just over our heads. Job had to learn that God's wisdom is unlimited. And in the 38th chapter of the book of Job, one of the most fantastic chapters in the book, Job was questioning God. It seems that he thought that God, uh, he, he could have done a better job of running the universe than God. Because in the prologue, you understand that he lost all of his family and all of his wealth. The Bible says he had 7,000 sheep. Uh, he had 500 yoke of oxen and 500 uh, camels and she donkeys. I don't say that other word too much. And she donkeys and a very great household. And the Bible says he had seven sons and three daughters. And the Bible teaches that the Sabians came over and got the donkeys and the camels. And the Bible says the Chaldeans came and and drove away uh, the, the, the oxen and so on. And so he had enemies coming. And they came the same day, one behind the other. And uh, the, only the servants survived. That is the messenger survived to tell the story. And now we recognize that uh, the sons were eating. They had a custom of eating in the eldest brother's house. Some say birthday. I don't know about that. Or maybe it was just big dinners. But they drank a lot of wine. So they were drinking wine and dining and fellowshipping. And you got to be on your best behavior. Because you don't know when God is going to make a move. And the Bible says some kind of cyclone came up from the wilderness. And smote the house where uh, the eldest son lived. And all of them were inhabited inhabiting the house at the time the house enclosed on them and they were all dead and uh, there Job is it brought him down to his knees you remember how he said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord is that right and uh, we recognize that he here he is now he could have said, I don't understand. I may not understand why all of my, uh, my sheep are gone and my oxen are gone and, and my donkeys are gone. I, I lost all of that. I don't understand why all of my children are gone and uh, my health is gone, disintegrated, and here I am, worms crawling up in my body. But one thing I do know, and that is, I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the latter days, he's going to stand up on the earth. And after the skin worms have eaten up my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And so there he is. He's out there and he won't answer from God. When you read this closely, you will find that Job spoke in the narrative nine times. From the prologue to the epilogue. 
and that uh, Bilhah spoke two times. Zophar spoke three times. Uh, Elihu spoke one time. But when God spoke, he spoke only once. Why? Because when God speaks, it's fine. Say amen if you can. And so God is dealing with it. And out of the nine times that Job spoke, God on this occasion came down in a whirlwind and called him up. If I were over to school, we would call this a, a pop quiz. He said, I'm going to give you a pop quiz. And he asked Job 42 questions. And the point is, Job didn't have an answer to a single question. What God was doing was humbling him. Because he thought he could have done a better job of running the universe than God. And so God said, question number one. He said, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Answer if you have the information. He said, who laid the cone of stones? And uh, where were you when the morning stars sang together? And all of the sons of God shouted for joy. Ask, he said, answer if you have the information. What song did the angels sing and uh, serenaded the works of my hand? He said, can you finish the song? Can you finish the song? Surely you were back there. Surely you heard them singing when I created the world. He said, what does the lightning bear down? And uh, do you know about Orion? And do you know about uh, Palaeodos and the, all of the uh, various things up in the constellations and among the stars. Do you know where uh, you have you been into uh, the grove of death and entered into there? Do you know all the inner makings of what goes on in the inner world? Said answer if you have the information. How many times have you commanded to see when it comes over and keeps it within boundaries and tells it to stay right there and don't over flood its banks. Do you have the information, Job? I've got 42 questions for you. Oh, Job said, I better put my hand over my mind because I've been talking about things that are too wonderful for me. Isn't that right? And so God, don't you see him now? God is working with Job. And oh, Job, he said now, I lost everything in the prologue, but God is saying if you can hold on in the epilogue, I'm going to give you a double for your trouble. Say amen. I'm going to give you a double for your trouble, but what you got to do is hold on, and the first thing you got to do, I want you to pray for those that have been talking against you. In other words, you had you in captivity. He said, I'm going to lift you and make you free if you can pray for those who've been trying to shoot you down. Say amen. amen. And old Job had to do that. And then the Bible says, instead of him having 7,000 sheep, God doubled him up. Say amen. amen. Gave him 14,000. 500 yoke of oxen gave him 1,000. Everything he had, God gave him double for his trouble. I was over in the classroom one day. Brother Wallace, one of my students asked me, said, Dr. Foster, said, now, Job had 10 children over there in the prologue, and he had 10 in the epilogue. Said, uh, was it the same Miss Job that gave him the latter group of children that gave him the former group of children? And, uh, you know, it just uh, floored me. And sometimes I don't care how many books you read, you got to tell the folk, I don't know. Say amen. Yes, you just got to say, I don't know. Say amen. I don't know. I, I want you to tell you, it was pretty reasonable to think that that old Job's wife over there in Job 2.10 that told him to curse God and die looked like God would have moved her out the way. But I can't get my put my hand in God's business. God may have Bless her where she could have the second litter of children. Ten over there and ten over here. But one thing about it, we've got to let God mind his own business. Isn't that right? Mind his own business. Because God is in control. When I think of the universe, the scientists tell us that there are an estimated 100 billion galaxies. Each with an average of 100 billion stars. 
the closest galaxy for our Milky Way is two million light years of empty space away. A light year is the distance that light can travel in one year's time, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, about six trillion miles, traveling at reasonable rocket speed, 19,000 miles per hour, it would take us 144,000 years to get to the nearest star. God sits up on the circle of the earth and holds everything together. Say amen. And when God does something, if it doesn't make sense to us, but if it makes sense to God, God has more sense than all of us put together. Say amen if you can. I've just got to move on down the line. Well, I'm moving now. And in the second place, God's eternal purpose is knowable, which we know it or not. Truth of God is knowable. Look with me in John 8, 31 and 32. Jesus said to those Jews that believe on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Say amen if you can. Somebody said, can we all understand the Bible about life? Well, God's word is inspired. Isn't that right? And look with me in 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17, that from a child, God, Paul told uh, Timothy, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto every good work, everything we need for life and godliness is wrapped up in the word. Say amen if you can. We can understand the word. Say amen if you can. And Peter said in 2 Peter 1, 19 and 20 and 21, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day done and the day star arise in your heart, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. He said, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Say amen if you can. The Bible is right. We can trust the Bible. Does he want us to all understand it alike? Ephesians 5, 17 Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Say amen. He wants us to understand it. Somebody said, if that be the case, well, when it comes to the church, uh, does God want us all to see uh, the one church? People are saying in the world now, some are saying in the church that it doesn't make sense. But I'm here to tell you whether it makes sense to you or not, if it makes sense to God, he has more sense than all of us put together. Say amen. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, what are you doing now? I'm proving that there was one church in God's mind before the foundation of the world. The brother came to me uh, today in the office and had a visit with me. And he told me, raise your hand, brother. He said uh, he was in a denomination of church. Uh, and uh, he's up in age now. But he came one day and he met uh, a preacher by the name of Brother Terry Wallace. And uh, taught him the word. And uh, he is now a member of the Church of Christ. Put all that behind him. God blessed him. There he is. Say amen. And had me going there, I thought I was teaching a new convert. I thought I was working on somebody that uh, was in the world. But he relieved me. He said, now, just a minute. Let me get a word in. I'm already a member. Say amen. Oh, Lord. Yes, I'm already a member. But look at him. I was working on him and trying to let him know that God had one church in his mind before the foundation of the world. Somebody said, where you going? Back 
to the Bible I go. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, for this cause I, Paul, the prison of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me to you and how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs and of any church or do of the same body, the same body. We need to stick with that, brethren. Of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Say amen. Want us in the same body. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. I say amen if you can. And uh, as he went on talking about all of that, he said uh, unto me who am less than the least. How could you be the less than the least when he was the top apostle, but he put himself as the less of the least, being the most humble. That's why God recognized Paul and put him in charge. Let him write 14 books of the New Testament of the 27. If he wrote the book of Hebrews, more than half of the Bible, God had his hands on him. Say amen if you can. And the Bible says and that he went on to talk he said, is this given me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that when now unto the principalities and powers heavenly places might be known, made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord yes one church in his mind before the foundation of the world I don't find where God ever changed his mind about that but men say that it doesn't make sense uh, that God wants all of the saved in one church leave take your cotton picking hands out of God's business. Let God be true and every man a liar. Say amen if you can because the Bible is right. Yes! And I want you to know whether it makes sense to man or not. If it makes sense to God, that's the right thing to do. Somebody says well, in the next place as you're moving on down the line uh, the next thing you know we have a lot to do with the sinner's prayer. And people are calling, you see, tell evangelists, call them down and have a prayer and say, go back now after the prayer, you are saved and join your friends. This is a false teaching. It's a false concept. Say amen. Son, you see, you got to obey the gospel. Oh, Nicodemus, you see, yeah, he came to Jesus by night. People are asking me, why did he come by night? Well, it was more convenient for his not being seen with Jesus in the daytime. That's why he came by night. And he had a private dialogue with Jesus one night. And uh, Jesus uh, saw him coming. He was a ruler of the Jews. That meant he was a member of the Sanhedrin court. And he was high up in the hierarchy of the Jewish religion. And... Uh, at Jesus, he complimented Jesus and said, no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus looked at him and said, you must be born again. And he asked the question and the old preachers used to say he should have had better sense. He said, does that mean that I go back in my mother's womb and be born? Well, Jesus wasn't talking about biology. He was talking about theology. He was talking about salvation. Is that right? He said, you must be born again, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit. He shall not see the kingdom of God. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, there are people today, ladies and gentlemen, that and scholars and commentators who were right on that 
and say uh, the, the water meant the same thing as the spirit. Don't you know that God knew what he was talking about? And uh, he didn't say born of the spirit and the spirit. What kind of sense would that make? But he said of the water and of the spirit. In other words, you've got to deal with the spirit before you get to the water. Why? Because the spirit brings the message. No wonder the writer said over there in John uh, chapter uh, 16 and Verse number 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of his own of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. For he shall receive a mind and shall declare it unto you. God is saying, I'm bringing it down to Christ. Christ is bringing it down to the inspired writers. The inspired writers are going to put it in the inspired book. Say amen. And uh, that's where we need to leave it. Say amen if you can. And uh, somebody said, but of the water uh, and of the spirit, what, how does the spirit work? Well, I don't use, brethren, all that about the uh, male factor and the female. You got to be careful with that. Uh, don't add to the word. But what we do know is that the Holy Spirit uses means. Somebody said, what is this mean? In Ephesians 6 and verse 17, take unto yourselves the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He uses the word of God. Why? Because there's power in the word of God. The Hebrew writer says, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, soul and spirit, joints and marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, power in the word, same as you can, he uses the word, and uh, the Bible teaches that he brought uh, the gospel plan down here in for us, and that means before you can get into the blood, you see, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I'm about to make a point here now. Before you can get in the blood, you got to go through the water. You can't get to the blood unless you go through the water. Say amen if you can. Somebody was preaching one day, and my wife, uh, Brother Wallace, we listened to a lot of religious songs. And, uh, and some of them, uh, you know, uh, most of the songs, even in our songbooks, were written by uh, Newton and different ones that were not members of our fellowship. And this person was singing and said uh, he was trying to understand what it meant uh, uh, when Jesus died on the cross. Chapter 19 of John, verse 34, the Bible said the Roman soldier pierced his side, out came blood and water. Two elements, he said, I couldn't understand what that meant. He said, uh, but uh, it must have been something about the water, but he was trying to get around baptism. But I'm here to tell you, two elements came out, and it was not by accident, it was by design. God was showing that the blood and the water came out. You can't get remission of sins unless you reach the blood. You can't have cleansing unless you reach the blood. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 6 and 7, if you say you have fellowship with him but walk in darkness, you lie and do not the truth. But if you walk in the light as he's in the light, you have fellowship one with another. And the blood of his son Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. That's the present indicative active, which means it keeps on cleansing from all sins. Say amen. You don't just need it to get into Christ. You need that blood. It's just like the automatic uh, windshield wipers. Don't you see? When the, the water's coming on the windshield, if you got one of these modern cars, Lord, the first thing it's going to do is going to flip on automatically and wipe the windshield. Don't you know, friends, when we drop the ball and we fumble the ball, thank God the blood is still there. Say amen. Just like the windshield wipers going to wash away everything, the blood of Christ is good for us even after we are converted. Say amen if you can. But I'm here to tell you, you can't be saved 
unless you reach the blood. But how are you going to reach the blood? Well, the people say it's through prayer and prayer only. That's a false doctrine because they don't want to get into baptism because they say it doesn't make sense. But whether it makes sense to you or not, it makes sense to God. And God has more sense than all of us put together. Where in the Bible does it say you got to get into the blood? Hold the phone. I'll be there after a while. Where are you going? Back to the Bible. I go in Romans chapter 6. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Hold it therefore. We are buried with baptism into his death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life for if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Hold it now. We don't want to miss the point. We are baptized into his death. What happened in his death? John 19, 34, the blood and the water came down in his death. Say amen. When you're baptized into his death, you make application through faith to the blood. And when you go down in the water, you can look back here. Say amen. I've been to a few meetings in which uh, the brethren were upset. And they were embarrassed because when we raised back the curtain and looked in here, one time it didn't have a drop of water in the pool. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're getting ready for a meeting, you ought to have some water in the pool. Say amen. I got to look in here, brethren. I hope you don't mind that I'm going to pull the curtain. Why? Because of baptism. Say amen. Oh, there's plenty of water. Say amen if you can. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that uh, that's H2O. Say amen. It's nothing but H2O. They got water in there. And when you look down in there, you don't see any blood. It's by faith that you are doing what God said. You are baptized into his death. Just as his blood was shed in his death, you make application through faith with the blood. But you can't get to the blood unless you go through the water. Say amen if you can. All the Bible is right. I got to wrap it up tonight. I'm here to tell you. And when God doesn't make sense, if it doesn't make sense to you, it makes sense to God. And what we need to do is get in a hurry and do what God told us to do. Say amen. All the Bible is right. I'm going to preach it around the world. As long as God gives me breath in my body, I'm going to tell men and women the truth what you got to do to be saved. When I preach the word, I'm not talking about uh, Socrates, Aristotle, and Plato. I'm talking about Peter, James, and John. Say amen. I'm going to preach the word because the power is in the word of God. Say amen if you can. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is right. You got to obey that gospel in order to be saved. We're going to ask you to come Tonight, if you've not in compliance with the word, walk out on it this evening. I want you to know we must be obedient in order to be saved. And uh, God requires obedience. Uh, and that's the big O. The big O is necessary if you want to make heaven your home. We're going to be calling forth for you tonight to come forward. If you need to make peace with God, because you've strayed away and you need to come back. We don't need to wait to the end of the week or next Sunday when Brother Wallace preaches the word. But what you need to do is realize now is the time. Because people are dying every day. Doesn't right. seem as if we're having more people. You know, sometimes we're getting two in one week, you know. And that's unusual at the place where I preach. But people are dying, old and young. And God is trying to tell us something, I think. And that is that the whole now is the acceptable time when you hear my voice. Harder not y'all. Say amen.
We're going to ask you to come now as we stand on our feet to sing this song. The Lord is calling all over this world. Son of the living God, he's called. The let us sing. Grace this hour. we announcing some subjects and so uh, tomorrow night uh, we're going to preach if the Lord uh, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't intervene and help me to change my mind you know preachers who've been preaching a long time realize sometimes we will propose to do one thing and God can change our mind so keep that in mind but if we don't God doesn't change my mind through the Spirit the Holy Spirit and so on I'm going to preach on the subject the price is right Price is right would be tomorrow night. The price is right. I believe this afternoon that if the Bible should be burned up, I think he could rewrite it. Amen. I think he could quote it. Amen. Just a walking, amen, quoting machine. And we thank God for his abilities and his talent. Did he bless your hearts this evening? Amen. Did he bless your hearts this evening? Amen. 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 At, this, at this time, my brothers are going to come with a basket for the benefit of those who are with us this afternoon but may not be able to get back with us this week who would like to share in an offering with him, a love offering. We certainly would appreciate your gift this evening and blessing the man of God. I'm going to ask Stephen, whoever it is, come give us a song as the baskets are being passed and we'll come back for some closing remarks and we're going to leave you out lead you out of this place amen so you can enjoy the rest of your evening whomever is coming everybody ought to hold to his hand hold on to my God's unchanging everybody ought to Transition. 
Sister Linda McAdory in your prayers as she was rushed to the hospital just a few moments ago from, from church. Have not received any word on her yet, but we're praying that all is well. Blood pressure was real high, so let's keep her in, in our prayers. Also, Sister Rosemary Denton this coming Saturday will be laying her mother to rest there at the Southside Church there in Memphis, uh, Tennessee on Saturday. Also, I was sent a text to uh, Brother Wallace to pray for uh, Felicia we are on uh, the way uh, to the Baptist Hospital. Uh, this is brother, okay. This is brother, sister Mason. Uh, the daughter left service is not feeling well, and so um, we pray that all is well with uh, the Mason family uh, as well. Uh, let's remember also on next Sunday we will talk about that in just a moment. But keep them in your prayers, sister Camila. More in the loss of her father, still dealing with that loss. So let's keep. The, her, her in our prayers uh, as well. Sister Eva Janelle Bell, uh, Sister Wanda Hayes, uh, Jamarion, also Jeremy uh, Rayford, uh, Sister um, Irene's son, who will be going in for open heart surgery tomorrow, I believe it is. And so let's be praying for, for um, uh, him that uh, all will go well. Uh, he, you know, sometimes these doctors now can do stents and just go in without cutting you open or anything, but he's going to have to be opened up. And so he's going to have a, a long healing process. Uh, but, but let's be praying that he will do, do well. I know that, um, okay. He's not going to do the surgery? Okay, all right. And so we're going to be praying for him that he um, have a better spirit and, a, uh, and more of a positive spirit as he go into this surgery. Uh, tomorrow, I know that uh, you would love to be there with him, but he, he made known that he did not want us, and I know you know that's going to be a, a weight for you if you did go. And so we just pray that all will be will be will be well. Also, um, again, we're grateful to the to the Facebook people who uh, members, Sister Clara Cheeks, uh, Eva White, Betty James, Preston Wallace, and Priscilla Clark. Uh, and then there was others that are dealing with some mental issues in, uh, in, in church. Uh, uh, we are preparing to do a um, grief summit, uh, excuse me, mental health summit uh, coming up here in December. And we're going to be talking more about that in the next few weeks uh, to come uh, because I believe that mental illness is something that we really need to talk about uh, and have a great open dialogue about it <clears throat> within the church. And there it is. Um, up on your overhead screens, mental health uh, summit. And then there's going to be some classes, I'm told, going to be broke down to where you could actually be in classes, questions that can be asked. Um, and that will be a situation where if you got something very private, you can also do that as well. And so we're looking forward to uh, that, that summit, a health summit, and thanks to all of those who are involved in it. And so I look forward to that. Um, grief is, is, is real. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when we lose loved ones, we are so busy, okay? We're busy arranging the funeral. We are busy putting everything together. We're busy everything. And then when the funeral is over, we get busy doing so many other things that we find out we have not grieved. And something happened that triggers it, and you go into a mental almost meltdown, and people think you're about you're losing it. And what really has happened you just, it just dawned on you that I have never really grieved. And then secondly, let me say this, and I promise I'm going to turn you loose. You know, when you're caring for those in your family who are, 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 are health challenged, uh, if you're not careful, it'll take a toll on you. Okay? And you've got to remember to kind of take care of you so that you can take care of them. Uh, they're going through what they're going through. I remember my mom laying down one day, and the next day 
she had, she was like a different person. That stroke got her. And, and I had to rearrange my thoughts because she was experiencing something that I was not experiencing. And, and that way she was feeling, can you imagine being able to do for yourself, talk good and walk well, and all of a sudden it changed in a moment? Your whole life changes. And so, so there's a whole lot to think about, to take in. And, and also, um, Sister um, Tabitha has given me some other information that we're going to be talking where you can actually, uh, 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 you can get information on grief and you can, uh, you can have it at your disposal. You can go online and you can just talk. You can uh, uh, just, just, just have a dialogue. And so we're going to look into that even more. Uh, and we're just grateful for all of our members who are looking into these things because they are real. But we don't ever want to take God out of the equation. Never. Take God out of the equation. So we thank God for, for that. Now, this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, don't, don't you worry yourself at all. Brother Wallace is going to remind you, amen, next Sunday is Switch It Up Sunday. Amen. Next Sunday, y'all know what Switch It Up Sunday is. Now, 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 Sister Wallace, you can't sit there next Sunday. Amen. Amen. You can't sit there next Sunday. Amen. Sister Ward, you got to move. Amen. Sister Sherry, you ain't sitting there next Sunday. Amen. I know you want to. I'm going to sit you right now. Just kidding. But, uh, but we, we're going to be we're going to be all over the place. We're going to be in different places on, on next Sunday. And, and amen. And listen, I, I'm looking forward to somebody getting here so early that they're going to take my parking spot. <laughs> Switch it up is only in the building, not in the parking lot. <laughs> but just in case you get my parking spot, I ain't going to be mad at you. Amen. We're just going to enjoy switching it up Sunday. There are other things that are coming up. Now, I'm telling you. There's going to be a lot of other things that are coming up here at the Grove that we got to get back. Watch this. The building is not full, and it's because we are not saving souls. And, and we were the fastest growing church in the world at one time. It was because we had a belief, and we had faith, and we were not willing to compromise the truth. And we have lost a lot of people to other denominations because they failed to learn the truth. And we're having that, that same problem now. People don't know what they believe and why they believe. Well, you ought to know if you study. Brothers and sisters, two plus two has been four ever since I've been in the Word. And ain't nobody changed it. But it's amazing how we look at God's Word. It says the same, but we want to change it. It's because of what we want. And this thing is not about us. It's about, it's about God. Again, thanks to the kitchen committee, thanks to the decoration committee, I've been trying to find someone to take over that decoration. I believe I done found them. Just pray for me as we keep doing that because everybody can't do it. Amen. But I believe I done found someone. I want to thank uh, Alvin for an outstanding Saturday night. Amen. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Let me say this. Now, they got to admit, I didn't know really what was going to transpire yesterday. I stayed away, didn't do anything. Last minute, I text Al, hey, everything good? That's all I did. Because what I'm trying to do this year into next year is to be less of me and more of others. Because it's time for others to step up. Hey, are y'all following me? Amen. Hey, it's time for others to, to step and, and it's, that, it's getting to that point. Now, if we're going to grow, it's going to be because all of us. Well, bro, why you know I can't teach? Can you set a class up? Can you get them in your home and we come teach it? Come on, can you set up a Bible study? Uh, well, I don't know how, that, don't worry about that. Can you get the study? And if you can get the study, we can teach it. Is that all right? So I got some folk, I'm going to bring them out. Bring them, we'll teach them. And that's how we do this. Because people right now, I'm being honest now, you're not going to knock on folks' doors and they just let you come in. You gonna, we're going to have to do it. And that's what it's all about. Now, we are going to have to get back to opening up our mouths and asking people, are you saved? Yes. Not are you a member of the Church of Christ. Are you saved? Yes. Amen. When you say Church of Christ, you know, I read through them all. But if you can just say, are you saved? Yes. Do you know the Lord? Can I invite you to know him? All in how you uh -huh, present that thing. Amen. And we're looking forward to the grove. Because see, this wall is supposed to bend down. But when the devil gets involved, he'll stop a good thing. And that's what the devil does. He gets involved and he messes up 
amen, a good, good thing. God bless you. One more time, did not Brother Foster do a great job for us? Tomorrow night, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, he'll be right back here. Amen. Back to the Bible, he goes. Back to the Bible, he goes. Justin, thank you for being here with us. You're leaving uh, early in the morning. Amen. Got to get back to the ATL. Well, thank you for being here with us. We thank God for you. It is our sincere prayer that you have a safe trip and a safe uh, return back to. Shall we be standing together? Shall we be standing together uh, as we go down from this place? I'm going to ask, if you will, Brother Jones, Brother Terry, if you will take Brother Foster on to the uh, foyer area. As in other preachers, would you meet them in the foyer area, if you don't mind? Uh, I'm going to be praying this prayer. I was asked to pray in regards to the situation, and so we're going to ask Brother Foster, if you will, to go on. And we'll meet him out, out there. To, to um, West Oak Road, it is my prayer this evening that you have a wonderful afternoon, that you rest well tonight, and that you get up and have an awesome, awesome day on tomorrow, and that you don't tire yourself out, and that you come back on tomorrow night. You coming back tomorrow night? Yes. I'm going to look forward to seeing you. Shall we pray together? God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. But our hearts have been made to rejoice over. We thank you for this day and everything that you've done for us in this day. Thank you for Brother Foster. Thank you for the preached word. Thank you for all of those who has made not only Saturday, but even today an awesome, awesome day. Being in your presence, being with our brothers and our sisters, fellowshipping one with another. God, we ask right now that you be with Sister Linda McAdory. Strengthen her father. Be with Sister Rosemary Denton in the loss of her mother. And be with the Mason family and that daughter Felicia, that all is well. And to our Facebook family, Father, we, we ask that you would be with all of those who text and who called in or who emailed for prayer. God, you knew the desires before they even typed them. So, God, we ask if it is within your divine will, you grant them the very desires of their hearts, Father. Be with Justin as he travels back to Atlanta. Allow your amazing grace that brought him here to extend it back to him, Father, on his way back. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. Now, Father, we leave this place today, but never ever from your presence. When we find ourselves home, we pray we'll find the thing that you've given us in their rightful places. We ask this prayer and many others in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And praise God.